Hi, I'm Kevin Galilee and I'm on 52 days of hunger strike in Rome, Italy. And uh, I would like to give a brief presentation on um, the basic points of the global depopulation policy, a foundation for um, a people so that they can um, understand what this is all about. I have um, split this presentation in 15 different points and that will cover basically every aspect of the global depopulation policy. Point number one, since 1945, the international community revolves around the depopulation and globalization axis. And globalization has been advanced openly but by coercion, while depopulation has been advanced secretly and by deception. Point number two, the rationale for the depopulation globalization system is sound and simple by controlling the population growth of every country on earth so that it neither grows nor shrinks um, all countries can live within their natural resources and they don't have to start wars of aggression and by controlling the uh, natural resources of every country and making them available on the open market at a price dictated by supply and demand then all countries can access vital raw materials uh, necessary to develop and prosper regardless of where they are found on the planet. Point number three, depopulation is in recognition of the fact that the planet we live on is finite and that the time has come to live within its limits, while globalization is in recognition of the fact that vital natural resources are uh, unevenly distributed on the globe, but that all people and all nations need them equally uh, regardless where they live. Point number four, the depopulation and globalization program um, is not malevolent in intent. It is actually benevolent, even though the methods used are pretty diabolical. Um, it is benevolent um, by dire necessity and uh, necessity imposed on us by the powerful and uh, natural instincts that drive uh, humanity, the instinct to procreate and the survival instinct. The, uh, the program of population control um, tames, in a sense, our instinct to procreate because it sets limits on it, while the program of globalization uh, satisfies our instinct to survive. And of course, we, uh, we all uh, want to do that. Five, point number five, the program of population of the population was enshrined in global policy at the end of the Second World War in the hope that it would uh, preserve us from a third world war, which this time would be nuclear and therefore catastrophic and would inevitably lead to the assured mutual annihilation of all parties involved. Controlling population uh, growth therefore um, started as a peace preservation measure and depopulation can be seen um, as the obverse side of uh, nuclear uh, deterrence, the obverse and invisible side of nuclear deterrence. Point number six, by the 1970s, the program of uh, population control was driven by an additional prerogative other than peace preservation. And that was, and it continues to be, the need to preserve natural resources for uh, future generations. And um, by uh, point number seven, by the 1990s, yet another prerogative was added uh, to the program of population control, and that is the need to uh, protect the environment. So today, the, the, uh, the depopulation program is uh, driven by, um, well, it is first of all global and brutal, and it is driven by three international security prerogatives, and they are um, peace preservation, resource preservation, and environmental preservation. Point number eight, because these prerogatives cannot be ignored as they trump all other uh, prerogatives, be they national, political, economic, uh, religious, cultural, and so on, the system that has evolved is one of mutual coercion mutually agreed upon. That is to say, every country uh, imposed the population of every other country and all countries impose it on one another so that no one can escape it, even the powerful, the most powerful nations like Russia and the United States. In this fashion, the government of every nation is forced to wage war against uh, the fertility and longevity of its people, rather than have to wage conventional war against other nations. This international accommodation uh, has the advantage of sparing the existing infrastructure from destruction by war, 
and along with globalization it facilitates universal and continuous development uh, development uninterrupted by uh, periodic destruction through war and that is a step up from the previous system of um, uh, of colonialism point number nine mutual coercion mutually agreed upon would not work unless uh, there is a, uh, a neutral agency empowered to coordinate the depopulation uh, globally and to oversee the accomplishment of uh, targets for every nation on earth. And of course this uh, neutral organization is the United Nations and the United Nations was created in 1945 for the very purpose of preserving international peace and advancing global prosperity through covert depopulation and coerced globalization. Uh, in the parlance of diplomacy and in the words of the Atlantic Charter, the policy statement agreed upon by the Allies in 1941, the UN was created to accomplish uh, the uh, abandonment of the use of force and of ambitions for territorial aggrandizement, global cooperation to secure uh, better economic conditions, economic and social conditions for all, freedom from fear and want, and free trade and free access to raw materials. Um, it was a new vision for the future that President Roosevelt expressed in the following words at Yalta in February 1945, and I quote, The Crimean Conference ought to spell the end of a system of, universal, of unilateral action, the exclusive alliances, the spheres of influence, the balances of power, and all the other expedients that have been tried for centuries and have always failed. We propose to substitute for all these a universal organization in which all peace-loving nations will finally have a chance to join." End of quote. Point number 10. The program of depopulation is overseen nationally by the executive branch of every country and internationally by the United Nations and its agencies. And uh, in particular by the United Nations Development Fund, the United Nations Economic and Social Council, the World Health Organization, the World Bank Group, the International Monetary Fund, and the Food and Agriculture Organization. Point number 11, the covert chemical and biological methods of depopulation used across the world to subvert fertility and promote morbidity um, are conceived and turned on the populace by the military industrial complex, which is in a sense uh, empowered to, um, to commit genocide. Point number 12, the moral anchor of the global program of depopulation and why I'm here in Rome on a hunger strike is the church, uh, which justifies genocide in its encyclical letter Humane Vitae on human life, subtitled on the regulation of birth. And in paragraph 15, which is prefaced by the title Lawful Therapeutic Means, uh, it states, uh, and I quote, on the other hand, the church does not consider at all illicit the use of those therapeutic means necessary to cure bodily diseases, even if a foreseeable impediment to procreation should result therefrom, provided such impediment is not directly intended for any motive whatsoever. In other words, it says to governments, to secular authorities, go ahead, commit genocide, sterilize people under the false pretext of healing them of another disease. So this is the, the ethical loophole created uh, by the church for the commission of genocide. Point number uh, 13, the program of the population seeks to balance births and deaths at 10 per 1,000 people. So this is the magic number they are targeting. 10 deaths and 10 births for every 1,000 people per year. In this fashion, the population neither grows nor decreases. It's stable. Point number 14, the other targets of the global depopulation program is peak population of nine, at most 10 billion people by the middle of this century, by 2050, uh, as well as optimal um, life expectancy um, or peak life expectancy, which is considered to be 70 years. That is to say people work to 65, then they go into retirement for five at most 10 years, which is feasible for governments, and they are helped into an early dead, death. And the third target is um, optimal population levels, which have been globally calculated to be 4.5 billion. Considering the current um, um, technology that we use for energy generation and um, the, um, um, the consumption patterns per capita. So what we have, peak population at 9 or 10 billion, 
peak life expectancy at 70 years and optimal population levels at around 4.5 billion. These are the major targets which will be accomplished within 100 years unless we stop this program dead in its, in its tracks. And the last point I want to make is that um, now people um, tell me every day uh, the same vapid arguments why I should uh, do nothing about this because I cannot fight against the wind. Uh, I'm struggling against windmills. Uh, the system is too big and cannot be changed by a single human being. And this is, of course, um, um, incorrect. This is the peasant mentality speaking, the peasant mentality that has us trapped in this system of genocide. Uh, the reality is the opposite. Um, society is a human construct and can and always has been changed by single individuals who have triggered, triggered uh, a movement um, or who have put out there an idea that has changed the world. Uh, society is also the embodiment of an ideology, uh, of ideas and ideals, and it is he who has the best ideas and ideals who wins in the end and who dictates the, uh, the course and nature of society. Society does not fall from the sky complete and immutable. It is for us to shape and improve, not for us to accept without question by submitting to old and stale ideas and to obsolete and corrupt institutions. Society has to be continuously recreated, otherwise it decays. Thank you for our attention. Thank you.